Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of In The Zone. Today we are at this remarkable institute, Park Austria, Far Far Schule, Institute of Applied Sciences and Technology, which is also one of the notified zone in Haripur, KPK. Today with us, we have Dr. Nasir, and uh, he's going to let us know more about this zone. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Sir, this is indeed a beautiful university, and with the name, uh, Park Austria. We think there's some collaboration, some history behind it. Could you uh, let us know about uh, how it came to being, what kind of subjects they are offering um, for the people uh, who don't know much about this university so far? Thank you. Actually, uh, the concept of uh, the Fahok Shule started off in something like 2005 when uh, Dr. Atawar Rahman was the chairman of the Higher Education Commission. Under his chairmanship at that time, there were seven universities that were to be established with foreign collaboration in Pakistan. Now, somehow that, that uh, project did not uh, take off, but we did not lose hope. And uh, over a period of time, that those universities used to be called the Universities of Engineering, Science and Technology in Pakistan, which were basically to geared towards not just research and teaching, but skill development as well. So subsequently in 2016, um, we came up with a concept note of establishing a different kind of a technology-based education in Pakistan, which is absent. We have the engineering universities on one side, and we, and we have the uh, TEFTA and the NEFTAC uh, skill-oriented programs. But in the middle, the technology part was missing. So we borrowed this program, this idea from the, which is very much common in Western Europe, especially in Germany, in uh, Austria and other countries. So we um, went there, looked at their models, and we replicated those from academic support with Austrian universities. Austrian universities are called also called Fachhochschules, but they're also, uh, the, the second part is the Universities of Applied Sciences and Technology. Okay. So we adopted that uh, name also Austria because our main collaborators are in Austria. Right now we have uh, three uh, collaborations going on in Austria. And the best part is that um, uh, five of our students are already with uh, one of our partners in Innsbruck, studying there for one semester. And they've received scholarships from uh, different European uh, institutions. The collaboration basically is about, we have taken over their syllabi, their um, uh, curriculum, uh, their accreditation, their standards. So it'll be over a period of time, an institution which will be at par with the Austrian partners that we are having this partnership with. And our students can move back and forth. Uh, like, uh, I, like I said, uh, there are five students who are going oh, now. Culture, yes, uh, 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 five students who have gone to Austria already. And uh, on the 11th of next month, uh, of this month, sorry, October, one of the Austrian students is coming here for one semester. So. You, you have to understand we are just three years old. We've just started this journey. So we have these three collaborations in uh, Austria. We've just had a collaboration in, uh, in robotics in Würzburg in Germany. Uh, they are going to take 15 of our students on scholarships also. And we have five universities in China where we are doing a master's in uh, uh, railway engineering, in uh, artificial intelligence, uh, and mineral development uh, and agriculture food technologies, especially focusing on uh, food processing and packaging, which is so important for this region. Yes. So that was the basic concept behind it. But a bigger program was launched before uh, 2016, but for some reasons it could not take off. So we have now uh, taken this as a model. And the best part is that another similar Fahok Shule is right under construction in Real in Sialkot. Oh, wonderful. And uh, we hope that we can replicate this in other uh, provinces of Pakistan as well. Traditional engineering universities, technology universities, focus on more on the classroom and the lab education. With us, uh, with the Fahoshule model, every student has to spend 850 hours in the relevant industry in training. One bad thing that we have is that we have very few holidays. So the summers the students have, 
uh, uh, are basically spent in the relevant industry. So that from day one, from the first semester, uh, for eight consecutive semesters, they will go to the relevant industry and they will train there for two, two and a half months and they will learn the part which is the practical part which they have been taught in the class and in the lab and look at an industrial facility where they can further improve their skills. Sir, uh, this is always missing. Uh, industry always complains that academia, they do not provide students who have the skills to work. They need to train them for another six to 12 months and then they are ready enough to be their employee. So this is actually a great effort. You are actually building a ready uh, to work sort of students out in the market. So that's wonderful. I want to know uh, how the idea of special technology zone came in because you are still very young and what was the planning behind it? We learned from our partners in Austria and in China. Okay. Now, in, in Austria and in China and in Germany, most of the Fachhochschules are very close to or inside industrial zones. So they have a direct contact with them on a daily basis. What we want to do here is that we want to build our own industrial state around us. Rapidiv is, is an example. There are, uh, there are three more companies that are coming in. What will it do? What it will do is that if we have, let's say we have, a, we have space for about 20 acres for uh, companies that can come and they can set up their own facilities also. Well, how do we benefit? Of course, they benefit because of the tax incentives that the industry gets. Uh, they will get um, skilled uh, manpower on campus. Uh, the companies will get uh, to use our uh, R&D facilities. Our faculty will train with them. Their experts can teach our students the practical skills and to be part of that production system on campus. So this year we sent about 1,300 students uh, to uh, 170 plus institutions across Pakistan. Next year, we are going to send 2,000 of them. So this number is increasing every day. So the idea basically is that instead of companies training them afterwards, we train them beforehand. Between as well. And That's since they will be working with these uh, partners for uh, four years, and the feedback that we are getting from these industries, because every time we do this exercise, we invite the industry wallas to come over and give us their feedback. That is very important. These are young people, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old. But the feedback that we get from them, from the industry is that if we send, for example, or to uh, an industry A, five students, they say, please send these very students again next year. There is no uh, concept of a, of a stipend to be paid to these students, but they also are prepared to pay them a stipend because, you know, they are skilled enough theoretically and in the classroom and when they go for that practical job, they are better than the uh, labor that is already there, which is semi-skilled for that matter. So skilling is our slogan. So we equip them not only to become employees, but employers as well. I'll just give you a small example. A student of ours in the second semester, Saad Siddiqui, very famous all over the world, even in Pakistan, he's won every competition uh, in Pakistan. He started off a company called Adversity when he was in the second semester. Right. Undergrad. No money. Today, he has been taken uh, by the garage in Saudi Arabia. He's shifted there. And uh, his company is worth millions now. Uh, but there are 17 other startups that are coming up in our technology park. And we are encouraging our own faculty and students to set up their own companies and to provide them with mentorship. This is one part that we are doing already. But establishing production units, research units, you will get, let's say, 3,000 very talented, skilled young men, women, who will be kind of supporting that kind of industry in their daily production systems. They'll be learning both ways. So once they get out of that production system, either those companies will hire them, mm or with the skills that they've acquired over four years, they'll be readily be available in the market to be taken over by companies. So that is the whole scenario that we are looking at. It's like 
the concept behind it, Triple Helix, yes. is actually here. Yes. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, is there any specific sector that you're looking to target for uh, your uh, zone area? Any special, uh, you know, a uh, quick company who I see, job okay, huh? AI related sectors, I may pass, fintech related sectors, I manufacturing, I. What sort of sectors are you targeting right now to come in your zone and work with you? Well, when we looked at um, technology um, parks mm -hmm. uh, in Europe and in China even, there are hybrid models as well. We don't want to restrict ourselves just to AI. We don't want to have just the fintech part. We want to go into manufacturing. We want to go into production systems. Because unless and until you have a diversity that comes into the technology part, uh, the computer base is quite large. Uh, but at the same time, we are also like rapid. It's a production facility. It's a manufacturing facility. So we would encourage. And in addition to that, even only yesterday, we have um, the rector has approved a program uh, with the Mineral uh, Development Center in our institute to establish a pilot plant for production of iron. So you know the diversity is there because that is something that is one of our core centers for students and for researchers. The apni ek production facility ho, peshat wo ek ton ki ho, ya do ton ki ho. But then what ha what will happen is that we will attract local investment also. If let's say, for example, if we produce a ton of uh, iron ore, and we say, well, this cost this much, the 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 investment that got into these plant and machinery is this much. People want to invest, but they do not have an idea. So we show them as a demonstration that this is a plant which is, let's say, five tons or ten tons that we are uh, we've established. This is the cost, and this is the revenue. So you can go for a fifty-ton uh, facility or a hundred-ton facility or a five hundred-ton facility for that matter. So a demonstration effect will take place. Our students will have hands-on experience. The mineral department people. And for the general public, for the investor, it will be a model that can be seen physically that this is working and this is generating gravity. Sir, uh, when you talk about the zone, what kind of spaces do you have available? I've seen two beautiful buildings. Yes. Do we have land for manufacturing facilities to come up and uh, build their infrastructures? We have uh, earmarked 20 acres of land which is specifically for those who want to build their own facility. We have some space, uh, 150,000 square feet, which out of which we've given 20,000 feet to uh, square feet to Rapidiv. There are other companies that are interested. You know, it's the first one that comes in. And when the first one comes in, and I'm grateful to the STZA because this match was made by the STZA. And, 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 and when they came in, they looked at the facilities, they looked at the workforce that they are going to with. They they have employees of 160 people. So if we train 160 students every six months with them, as as, as a trainee, paid or not paid, that's another issue. That that's not an important issue. But if you start them, uh, start training them on facilities which are on campus, and. I know that private sector institutions or, or, or investors do not have a lot of R&D funding. Yeah. We can provide that. We have excellent labs. We have very good uh, faculty, but they do not have sufficient experience in commercialization. This way, both can be in the same building, work together, together, learn from one another, and the R&D part and the uh, labs part and the students, for most important, you know, they'll be doing their projects. And when I when I was telling you about the students going into the uh, industry to do their uh, training, in the fourth year, every student will bring in one research project of a problem, issue, challenge faced by the industry, and he will or she will bring about a solution for it. So it will be industry related. It will not be blue sky research. It will be research that is focused on industry problems. And when the industry say, sees that we can solve some problems of theirs or be of help to them, this collaboration can expand. 
since Haripur is very ideally located, um, it took us 45 minutes to reach from Islamabad and few other locations are so much near. Are you planning to have some sort of facilities, amenities, uh, you know, for the companies who would want to shift from different cities and uh, come to your zone? See, uh, when we were starting with the STZA, they explicitly told us that unless and until you have a dedicated feeder power supply, uninterrupted power supply, unless you have a standby arrangement for uh, power as well, unless you have 24-7 um, uh, internet facilities, top notch. Before COVID, we didn't, of course, we didn't, we didn't know about STZA then. We have probably one of the best uh, high uh, performance computers in any university in Pakistan. Uh, we have our own dedicated feeder. Uh, it's about 4.3, 4.4 megawatts. We are using just a megawatt and a half right now. So the power supply is there. The buildings are there. For those who want to have physical space already, those who want to build their own facility, there is 20 acres of land that is available for them. And there is a very good, the, 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 the HPC has a capacity of 90, 91 teraflops. We are not using even 10. So we can sell this, uh, lease this uh, uh, facility to those companies that want to use it. In fact, yesterday we had a company here who wanted to buy some teraflops for their own use for distribution purposes. So we are also already talking to a company in Karachi and it's almost final eyeball. They will take 50 teraflops and sell them to the Middle East market. Idea kya hai? Idea ye ke you bring the business onto the campus and you take the campus out into the business. Thank you so much, Dr. Nasser. We are sure that uh, PFIST is uh, not just a university, it's a hub of opportunities and innovation. And we would really want uh, this special technology zone to flourish. With this, we are wrapping up the session in the zone uh, for now. And if you have any comments, feedback, and any update regarding this zone, uh, please uh, email us on the below mentioned uh, ticker. Thank you so much again, Dr. Nasser, and we'll Pleasure. see you in another episode. Thank you.